Hey. Coroner showed me the sheriff's body. It was mauled, though, right? You get this. Heart missing, body completely drained of blood. What, we're looking at a, a werewolf-vampire hybrid? Say it with me. A werepire. <laughs> huh? No. Come on. I'm not saying that. In episode four, we're going to take a slight departure and do one of our sort of concept episodes, which we're all incredibly excited about. It's called Baby, and the entire episode is going to take place inside the Impala. <laughs> one of the fun parts about the episode is that it really investigates what it means to be living your life out of your car. All right. Now we're cooking with gas. There's those moments in the show where the boys decide to take a case and then we sort of like watch the car go into the distance and suddenly they're in that town. Uh, this episode takes the time to sort of say, well, what happened in the moments while they're actually driving to that town? It's really, really wonderful what the whole cast and crew have done with this episode to give something uh, a little bit different, which we love to do. Yeah, listen, uh, Jesse, not a scratch, okay? The car or the show? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so good. Cool. Yeah. So and? So good. Oh my god. Is it good? I haven't even seen it yet. I loved I think a lot of it. I think one of the ideas was that it felt raw, and I don't think they're going to have it. It was really good without the music because we like being able to hear like the fight scenes happening in the car. How do you win? Oh, there's no score yet. Are they going to score? Yeah, but the only thing was Night Moons we heard. I love that scene where. Oh, yeah, Dad, start up. oh yeah, that's so right. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's no longer a do not reveal <laughs> because what? the Matt Cohen stuff nobody knew. But oh right, right, right. <laughs> Unless they watched international trailers. Yeah. Was that really on yeah. international yeah. trailers? Really? Yeah. 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 Why did they show the Canadians? Then I show the. What, why are we self hating the U.S. people? <laughs> it's discriminatory. I love this. Thank you. What can you tease about the episodes you guys are filming right now? Boys in front of them? Yes. Uh, uh, hey, Holly, can I get a water? <laughs> uh, this is a... Uh, uh, um, by the way, is it, side note really quickly. Uh, not diverting. It's but has so anybody okay. had these? These are like the chewiest. I think yeah. I have like four pounds. I don't believe you. In my, in my molars. I'll, I'll do this question. I don't gonna believe take a while. you. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Was it Twix? Thanks. <laughs> it was it Twix? <laughs> you, got, you got the smart one. Sorry. Will you ever get the loose Chester's line? <laughs> I haven't yet. Still working it's on it. It's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> We're still still working petitioning. That's right. We're not the loose Chester's, right? So. To... I can explain what was going on. No, no, no. no. Don't night moves me. Shh. Just let it wash over here. Let it Just take it in. This is ridiculous. One of the greatest rock riders of all time, Samuel. Sam. Seat of my brother 67 Chevy. <laughs> yeah, you started this. You started this. Here we go. Come on now. Working on the nine moves. <laughs> Next time I choose, hands off the wheel. You're not even looking at the road. Unique. I mean, it was the first ever in 200 and something episodes that we shot we've like ever that. Done it was a like brand that. new style. We've done, I, I, well, we've done things that have, you know, for us seen that was similar to that, but certainly we've never shot an entire show like that. Right. So there was a it was a bit of a learning curve, and I think um, I think once Tom figured out how he wanted to do it, then it was just getting used to that uh, to that setup and getting the because a lot, you know, 
camera guys would come in. It was it was all rigging. Normally, it's lighting that takes takes a long time to set up. Yeah, normally lighting. You know, they plop the camera there, put a, put the right lens on it, and then everybody goes into lighting mode. It's, you know, putting a light over there, putting a fill back there. We don't the, go into lighting mode. We, we go, go into our trailer. <laughs> <laughs> But, Jensen's uh, not like fixing lines and I'm no. holding up flops. <laughs> Although I would. Uh, <laughs> but um, so anyway, so that's usually what, what kills the most time on set is, is lighting. But here, it, you know, Serge basically just lit the car uh, as best he could. And then that was his job for the day was over, essentially. And it was all became into attaching the cameras to the car and rigging them so that they wouldn't move. Um, and then they'd be like, okay. See you later. And he and I would just take off, and with no crew and no nothing and no. So there was, uh, there will probably be a lot of outtakes and a lot of, um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of B-roll of him and I just, just yeah. around shooting the shit. <clears throat> and a lot of beats, probably. In fact, one of the one of the um, one of the shots that they used in the trailer was just us getting ready to start the scene. Oh, it's probably, oh, yeah. With the big, the big oh, the blast big, yeah, of yeah, sunlight yeah. through the back right. thing, uh, like I turned and looked at that, I was like, oh, that's gonna hurt the, the cameras and stuff. But it ended up being a really cool flare, and they ended up using it. And so I was struck by the the, the scene. <clears throat> so y'all have seen it, but where we pull out at the very end and Amara's behind us. Um, so for my coverage, they had to put a, a bounce, a, a lighting, and a bounce, so I couldn't see in front of, I couldn't see out because there was a big. Oh, yeah. Bounce, and it was totally wigging me out. It totally freaked me out. And he's, of course, like, hey, 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 is it scaring you? <laughs> like, all on ass. It's weird that you can't look forward. You know, even sitting as a passenger, you can kind of glance forward to make sure you're not about to hit something. Well, I knew was, I was fine. But really it's really weird when I would have a full camera rig, because they take the window out, yeah. the, the windshield, and they would just mount a big camera right on the hood, and it was, you know, probably this close for my, for my face. Well, I'm driving on an actual road, and I'm driving a real car, and I have real life passengers, and I basically my focus, my focal is completely gone. So I'm using peripheral vision to actually drive the car, trying not. And to the screaming it. of like passerby's. Yeah. Like, Sorry. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 asshole. Hey, supernatural. <laughs> uh, so it was, uh, it was certainly an experience filming. I it. can't wait to see the the scene, the scene that takes place at night after the um, scene with Dad where we wake up and we're kind of just sitting in the car. And that, I think when I read the script, I was oh, yeah. like, what a cool, like we never see the boys do this stuff. And I, I can't wait to see it. Um, but that to me, I was like, that should be something we do more often. You know, we usually have the come to God, like in the middle of his library or something. And it's always fun. Or sitting on the, the on hood the hood. of the car. But what a cool, like glimpse into the Winchesters, how they travel, right? We're not sleep. getting a motel every night. It's going to be, hey, right. um, don't want to waste the money, crash in the car and wake up and kind of head out. <clears throat> Yeah, the story was great. It was, I mean, Robbie did a great job writing it, and Tom did a great job directing it. And Tom, who's back directing episode yeah, 10 right now. right now. Uh, and he's one of our, uh, he's one of our ringers. You know, he's go-to, so. been around a while, and so it was, I think it was great to have him do the baby episode because he was able to plan it out in his head. And it was a, even though we had done a few shots using that rig setup, it, to do it all like that, I think really required somebody with a steady hand. And um, a lot of stuff, I think, caught us off guard, but we kind of just rolled with the punches. And a little bit of uh, improv which is always fun, and the boys singing in the car, and it should be a... It was cool. I'm glad you guys liked it. Well, to go yeah. the, after the episode actually airs, can you talk about working with Matt again and how that conversation is going to impact Sam and also Dean and Sam's relationship <laughs> going forward I'm after? Really quickly. Can you take please. this one? Yeah, I got it. Uh, um, I, I, um, I love Matt. Supernatural is such a unique show because even though he hasn't been on the show in what, five years, we still see each other several times a year. You know, I don't see anybody. I don't see my brother five times. You know, ten times a year, but I see a lot of our uh, guest cast that's been on the show. And so he's a buddy. He just became a dad. I mean, most of the time they call cut. We be like, so what's going on? How's the baby? Blah, blah, blah. How's the wife? Um, but it was great because I had, I had a, I only had maybe two scenes with him, um, other than this scene and baby, you know, I had a little bit when we show up to the door and it's dad and mom. Okay, I had a few more than two scenes with him, but it was a fun, <laughs> it was fun for Sam to play, so I was like doing a mental check. It was fun for, for me to play that part of Sam. Sam's not often really caught off guard like that. He's been through a lot, you know, he's been to hell and to heaven and to purgatory and he's died and killed and um, so Sam's not often sort of caught, you know, totally off guard and so that was a fun 
kind of direction for me to go with him. And I love Matt. And he was, what's funny is, on the call sheet, his name was, um, they didn't want to put Matt Cohen. So they put Leonard Cohen in case anybody picked it up. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's not going to be suspicious. Like, oh, Leonard Cohen is doing a guest spot on Supernatural. Um, he's going to play the troubadour. It's with Bob Dylan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but it was great. And he's a great actor. He brought something great to the character. Um, and it was a really neat kind of thing to do to use him instead of use Jeffrey D. Morgan, who I also love, um, because it kind of put Sam in an even more awkward position. You know, this wasn't the dad that he knew he met later in life, um, but it wasn't the dad that he knew, so it kind of had Sam really unawares, which set up the scene I was talking about where he wakes up. So it was a fun, it was just such a well-thought-out script and a well-executed script. Um, the guest cast is phenomenal, and I had a great time. Um, for me, I think probably this summer, I really had to look at myself in the mirror um, and, and try and figure out who I was and continue to accept that who I am will evolve and change and hopefully develop and grow. But um, I sort of finally took a breath, took a step back, and took a couple weeks and just turned off, right? And spent time with family and friends and, and really, really stopped just spinning my wheels. Um, I had somebody tell me like, you know, what are you running from? Why are you staying so busy? Like, what is it that you're, you're running from? And I had to answer that question for myself. Yeah. So thank you. It's okay with me if you brought me okay. <laughs> um, Is it a coincidence only that you were born in the Dallas area in the late 70s and your initials are J.R.? <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> go back and look when JR was shot, my real dad played his doctor. A little TV trivia for you there. Didn't know that one, did you? Uh, the air is too thin up here to fully comprehend that. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's, that's true. We used to go and visit my dad. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you know that. Look, it's two big beers, so really it's like 19. <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh, get out of here. Because we're not the lose Chesters. <laughs> it's not getting the Winchester we hail. Thank you. At the last convention, um, a fan was wearing a shirt and they brought one for me and it was it was a picture of me and it said, because I'm Sam effing Winchester. And I was like, yes! <laughs> so I took it and I got to Vancouver and I unpacked my bag and it was there. I was like, I, I can never really wear this. <laughs> but I have it, but I have it. <laughs> awesome. Your turn. Oh. Okay. Pass the buck. Wait, are you, were you a Dallas fan, the, the show? Yeah, I was. I was saying we used to. I used to as a child I'd go visit my father. We used to like hang out at South Fork Ranch and stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, Jared and I talked about. It's like we had the conversation. Like, when when do you think enough is enough? And we're like, you know, we could have. I could have gladly wrapped it up and been done several years ago and been very proud and happy of, of what we had accomplished. But it's but it's bigger than us, and for that reason. We, we still find joy and we still find motivation and we still find inspiration in, in doing it. So I don't know how long it's gonna last. We, you know, we're just, we're, we're really fortunate. We know that so we can continue doing it because we love it and, uh, and we love the people that surround us, uh, you know, our crew and you guys. And so that family is just really kind of what we're doing it for. It's not, it's not because we need, you know, we need our faces on TV. Um, it's, it's bigger than us. And so, uh, so I don't know. I don't know how long it's gonna go. I don't know where I'm gonna be in 10 years, but like I said, I, I hope whatever it is, whatever I'm doing, I'm happy and I'm surrounded by people as great as this, so. And one of these days, makes you cry. one of these, <laughs> it's not. But uh, yeah, it's funny, we, we happened to have gotten to spend some time with our family uh, yesterday and um, you know, we were letting the kids run around, and, and they are a little young. I'm looking forward to when I can 
when I can actually go do something like flying a kite with my daughter. Because right now it would just be me flying a kite. <laughs> she, she, you sit there, which could be cool. Uh, you know, or, you know, playing catch with, with one of his boys. Uh, you know, when we get to that point where playing with them is fun for both of us, right now it's just hurting cats. <laughs> and making sure they don't run into the street. Um, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, that kind of interaction. That, that I am enjoying also, you know, you were saying that watching the show kind of brings your family together, and that's, that's very cool. That is, that's one of the, the great things that he and I hear and love hearing. Um, but, uh, you know, right now, one of the things that I really enjoy doing with my daughter is sitting and watching a movie. Now, granted, it's not a movie that I would probably sit down and watch by myself. Oh, yes, you would. <laughs> I don't know, Despicable Me is kind of fun. <laughs> You know, uh, just two days ago, I was I, I was actually watching that movie with, with her, and we were laying on the bed, and she was, as, you know, we were just laying there, she kept getting closer and closer and closer to my head, and then after a few minutes, she was literally just cradling my head, and like, our heads were together, and my wife walked in, and she's like, what is happening? I'm like, I don't know, but don't, just leave it alone, because this is awesome. So, yeah, that's, what's that? Uh, I do, I do. <clears throat> and then again, I mean, like you said, we were with our families yesterday, and Jensen had the iPad, and I could hear JJ like, Daddy, can we put the Godfather back on? He's like, shut up, Ice Age is on. It's true. <laughs> Don't touch it. Daddy, I want to watch The Departed. This is how to train your dragon. Shh. Daddy wants dragon. This is my favorite part. Uh, and that, uh... I have the same reaction to hearing him speak. <laughs>
I see. So you can rewrite the episode. I thought you just meant how to Yeah, refilm the exact same script. No. Oh, well, that totally changes my answer. Well, that changes your answer. I hate that, yeah, bugs. <laughs> Sam and Dean flying to Hawaii. And, saying, <laughs> and swap mosquitoes. It's like, ah, give me some more off. Get my back. Just kidding. Yes, I got your back. Thank you. Aww. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, I'm Becky. Hi, Becky. No jokes about the super fan, please. Sam, <laughs> Becky, that's Sam over there. I know. What was the most awkward scene you've ever had to act? Supernatural. <laughs> 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 being Sam and Dean, being Jensen and Jerry, being Sam and Dean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that and um, uh, Nutcracker. <laughs> <laughs> because the machine worked. <laughs> no, so they were like, we did, we did several. Like, I would stand behind it. And they push the button and it go. <laughs> I was like, oh! <laughs> so then I had to stand there in those ski boots, and they they started out with it where it was going to end up. And so I stood. Yeah, had a it had a, a stopping. And I was like, yeah, but you say that to somebody, you're like, don't worry, it'll stop right before it gets you. <laughs> just don't, just don't lean your hips forward. But in the whole scene, I'm talking to Dean. And I'm like, so they're like, okay, so we're gonna load it, and so they. Down to the thing, and I was like, okay, I'm not talking. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I'm not moving. But then there's the whole part where they ask Jensen the question, he breaks the Japanese, and, and I realized that the scene's going, I'm kind of like looking at him and then looking at the girls. And, like, and I was like, oh crap, I moved. <laughs> I moved. I don't remember where like the spot is. So that was very awkward and mortifying. I was I was like sweating real sweat. <laughs> I wish the cameras were on when they showed us. Like, when we, they call us a set, and so we're like, we walk up, and we're like, okay, like, hey, we want to we just show you what, what this is going to look like. And so we hit the button, and it was like, wham! <laughs> and Jordan and I were like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jared just walked away. He's like, nope, not, not, not going to happen. <laughs> like, no, 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 it's refor it's like, you know, it's got steel plates of reinforcement and and I'm like, yeah, what happens if it just bends a little? <laughs> and Jared's like, what happens if it just bends a little? <laughs> what if you were shot in the face? What if you were shot in the face? Pissed off snake And then the, 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 the wind scene was written, was Sam was supposed to be like laughing at his brother's discomfort. But I was like, this is terrifying, I'm out of here. <laughs> so I just walked up I just like log coming over my shoulder. <laughs> and Jared just gets up and like, no. <laughs> no, nah, can't. Not doing it. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like, okay, well, I can't move. Because I'm frozen in terror right now. <laughs> it, was the first, it was the first time I've ever just flat out refused to do something as a script. And I didn't think you I was didn't gonna, have to do anything. I know. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to refuse it, but I, I was like, nope, I'm gone. And so I walked out, and I ended up in Video Village, where the director sits. And Phil looked at me, he's like, hey, you're supposed to be in there. And I was like, uh-uh. Like, <laughs> he, he didn't question or push me. I think he just saw it in my face. and was like, okay, I guess go tie it on Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't see that Sam was no longer sitting on the couch. And what you didn't see, they actually cut away. But, you know, we see the snake come over my chest and kind of down. And it actually went right between my legs. <laughs> and I'm not moving at this point. I'm just like, just let it do what it's gonna do. <laughs> just, let it, just let it run its course. Just, I'm not moving. And it did. It went right and all, and just right down and the whole nine feet of it. What's happening right here? <laughs> Was that for you then, the awkward, awkward, awkward things to go? Yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> Or the, or the bees. <laughs> hey guys, uh, just need to make sure you're not uh, uh, a 
allergic to bees. And you get stung. How do you do that? And you get stung, you're not going to go in an anaphylactic shock. What? <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? And you're like, you know, smear something on you? Like, actually, we're just going to take this bee and sting you with it. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's only a three quarter sting. And I'm not kidding, so they put this little piece of mesh on your skin, and then they holy live bees with tweezers, tweezers, and then they just stick the stinger, and it, and it goes just through the mesh enough to, to get like half its stinger in you, and then they pull it out. It doesn't come off the bee, so the bee's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm not, because now I just got stung by a bee, and I've got this welt now happening on my arm. And they're like, okay, it's been 30 minutes, you're fine. I'm like, yeah, except for this, you know, goiter on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's also funny because they asked us to do some wacky stuff on Supernatural. You know, jump out of this window. Don't worry, I know you can't see, but there's going to be a pad you're going to land on 12 feet down. You're like, cool. Like, uh, <laughs> spin this car into a 360, and then you're finding this guy ram your head through that wall. And we're like, cool, cool. They're like, we're going to sting with a bee. We're like, no, no. <laughs> But then to make things worse, it's like, okay guys, time to go into set. And we walk in, all of the crew have bee outfits on. <laughs> Guess what? Sam and Dean don't get to wear bee outfits. <laughs> They're in regular clothing. And then the bee wrangler. <laughs> on the day of shooting. On the day of shooting. I'm like, how many how many are we talking here? Like, like a couple hundred? He's like, there's actually sixty thousand. <laughs> like but then they're, okay, don't worry, they're drone bees. Um, they're drone bees, they're not going to sting you. Yeah, they're they're drone, you they're drone bees, as long as you stay calm, they're calm. And I'm like, okay, okay, stay calm. Wait a minute, when they yell action, I have a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> and we're supposed to be Are swatting me with that? And he goes, oh. <laughs> and then, and then we're, like, we're like, well, what about, so you're going to release 60,000 bees, but then we're going to go back to the beginning of the scene where there were no bees in the, for like, take two and take three in different camera angles. He's like, yeah, we're going to vacuum them up. I was like, doesn't that piss them off? He's like, only if we do it a bunch of times. <laughs> a bunch like, you know, 20 or 30. He's like, yeah, if we do it like three or four times, they're going to be a little angry. We're like, we're going to do it like 12, 15 times. Needless to say, we got stopped. I got, I remember just before Kim, our director, just before he yelled action, they were like, okay, roll sound, and I mean, they're, they're all over the place. They were, roll sound, okay, and the, the, you know, the camera system comes up, he's like, okay, 34 Baker, take two. They said, I have a marker, they run off, and I'm like, kind of crouched down, and I'm like, kind of flicking bees, just, I mean, they're on me, just landing on me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, find a happy place, find a happy place. <laughs> they're like, okay, ready, and, and just before he yelled action, boom! <laughs> One had gone right at my shirt and got me right on the upper part of my seat. Took it. <laughs> and I and it was like, ready, hey, and I was like, hey! <laughs> and I reached back there and actually pulled the stinger out. Oh. I was like, okay! <laughs> So they ended up making it with CGI anyway. Ah, uh, good old days. He would say love. Uh, I would say fight. Because if I want to tell anybody anything, I want to tell them to fight. In a good way, I don't mean like this fight. Gentlemen, what would you say? Uh, I would say super califragilistic. <laughs> You'd win every argument. Yeah. Yeah. No, and if anybody had a problem with it, I'd slap them. <laughs> and then say, because he told me to fight. To the tune of super califragilistic, exit now unnoticed. Is it that time? You know what time it is, guys? Stephen Dork.
Prince, Supernatural Family, this is Angelina. Say hi, Angelina. Pretty cool, huh? This is your family. Alright, what's your question? That is the last question. That is a question. That's a question. I don't write them. Why pudding? Um, and not pie. She said, why pudding and not pie? Um, I, it was just easier to say mustard. Uh, it was something that I think would throw them off. Um, pie? The person might be like, oh, he wants pie. He's saying, but pudding, you gotta be kooky. So true. That so very true. I love pudding. That says a lot about you, sir. Norton, that was the last question. Thank you. One last thing, can we all have the biggest round of applause for the people who make this happen and make it possible, the volunteers. <laughs> Without which none of this would happen. Mr. Spade. Absolutely. Mr. Spade is here to say a farewell and a big thank you to Mr. Jensen Ackles and Mr. Jared Padalecki.